Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. Here we are in part six of our eight-part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in part six, we want to talk about a very important principle in the program, and that is keyframing. Keyframing can be found throughout the program. It can be used with audio, it can be used with video, but keyframing is really the key to creating a number of effects with a program. Using keyframed animation, you can animate a special effect. You can have a black and white photo transition into a color photo. You can create motion that seems to track with objects in the video. And you can keyframe audio also so that when narration comes in, your music track fades back and the narration dominates and then the music track comes back in again. So keyframing can be used throughout the program for a number of effects and to control a number of levels. It can also be used to create pans and zooms. And I'm going to create a simple pan and zoom here on this photo simply to demonstrate the basic principle of keyframing. With keyframing, we create little points. They're called keyframes, little points that represent various settings. And then the program will create the animation or the transition from setting to setting or from keyframe point to keyframe point. Let me show you what I mean. We have a photo on our timeline. By the way, we can widen the monitor panel by simply dragging on the seam between the monitor panel and the timeline. Make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to select this photo and then I go over to Applied Effects. And Applied Effects, as you remember, shows you a list of all the effects that have been added to a video or to an audio clip. Two effects that are added by default to every video clip are motion and opacity. And with motion, we can control how the picture looks. We can make it bigger, we can make it smaller, we can focus on certain areas of the picture by controlling its position. So I would like to start with a close-up of this little boy. So I'm going to first adjust scale, and I'll do that by using this little slider here and just zoom in on the little boy. And then position, I could drag over any one of these numbers to change position. But it's much easier to change position simply by clicking on the monitor panel and dragging the video into position. So we've got a close up of this little boy. And this is going to be our starting keyframe. To open the keyframe controller where we can do our animation work, go to the upper right hand corner of the applied effects panel and click on the stopwatch. This is our keyframe controller area. I'm going to move the playhead back to the very beginning of the picture. And then I'm going to toggle on animation. So this begins the keyframing session. Animation can be toggled on either along the left hand side for individual characteristics or for the entire motion property simply by going along the listing here for motion and clicking on the little stopwatch toggle animation. This creates the initial keyframes. These keyframes represent this position and this scale for this particular photo. We'll move the playhead out toward the end of the picture. And now I'm going to scale back. I'm going to use the slider again to scale back just about far enough to see the whole picture. And then I'm going to drag it into position again, changing the position settings. And you notice when I do new keyframes are automatically created to represent those settings. So these are the settings here for the final position for position and scale. And these at the beginning are the initial position. And the program is going to create the transition between those two keyframes to create the pan and zoom. So let's play our picture. There you can see we're panning back and changing position to see the whole picture. And that's the basic principle of keyframing. You create an initial keyframe, you create a final keyframe. Matter of fact, you can create as many keyframes as you'd like. And then the program will create the transition from setting to setting. And doing this, we can create pan and zooms, we can create animated effects, we can create special effects, and we can also vary levels of audio. Keyframing is definitely a process you want to get to know. Now, in part seven, come back to our eight part series and we'll create some titles for our movie. As we come down to our wire here on our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. I'm Steve Grisetti. I hope to see you again real soon.